When we are talking about the downfall of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and looking into the background why it has happened as it happened, we're often talking about either the low morale of the military caused by the defeats in World War I, also we quite often talk about the awakened nationalist movements that were present for centuries, but we also talk about the inflexible leadership quite often that was not open for changes or when they were there was too little and too late. However, we're often ignoring an important factor which played a crucial role fueling all of these factors mentioned before, and this is not other than hunger and food. The Great War marked a turning point in the history of nations, testing not only military power, but also the economic resilience of the empires. The Austro-Hungarian Empire, a colorful mix of ethnicities and cultures, faced challenges on the home front that would ultimately influence its fate in the war. To understand this better, let's look at the map of the empire. We are often like to simplify as it's only two states were present, Austria and Hungary, but this is far from the truth. Even these states had their own partially independent autonomous parts inside them, and that caused even more and more friction in the empire. Let's look at the map of the empire to understand, have a better understanding of the nationalities and how the empire built up. Going from the east, northeast we had Galicia, which was mainly populated in the east part by Ukrainians and by Polish in the population in the north part. If we going to the Hungarian part of the empire, we see that Transylvania, which was an independent autonomous state inside the Hungarian kingdom, they have to remember the Hungarian kingdom wasn't actually a unified state. The official name of the Hungarian kingdom was the states of the Hungarian crown. As Hungary was built up from a few different states. For example, Transylvania was one of them. Transylvania had their own leader, which was sort of reporting into the crown. And the population of Transylvania was quite colorful. There were Romanians, Hungarians, Schwabs, Germans living there together. And if we go over to the main Hungarian, main part of the Hungarian kingdom, Again, on the northeast, we had the Ukrainian and Schwab population. The north was a Slovakian population, which is today called Slovakia, where also Schwabs and Slovakian lived together. But even the central part of Hungary, which was supposed to be a Hungarian part, this was also a mixture of Kuns, Hungarians, Schwabs, Germans. Then, if you're going south, Bosnia, where were Croats, Serbs, Bosniaks living there, and then there was Croatia and Slavonia. Croatia and Slavonia was part of the Hungarian kingdom, but again, it was an independent state inside. So they had their own leader, was called the Ban, who was reporting into the Hungarian crown, but they were independent inside Hungary, but they were part of the kingdom. Then next to them were Slovenia, where the Slovenians were living. And they also, they were like as a block of nationality. And then we have in Austrian part, we had Austria, where the Germans and Austrians and Schwabs and were living, and also the Tyrol part and the Trieste part, where Italian minority was living. But then if you north, if you look at the north, that's the part with today's Czech Republic, Bohemia and Moravia, where Czechs were living. So you see the, the empire was built up for 10, 15 different nations trying to live together, unified under the Habsburg rule. So just for a second, imagine that you are an officer in the Austro-Hungarian Empire's army and in your team you have 25 soldiers, soldiers from 10 different nationalities and none of, them speak, none of them speaks a common language. So suddenly the ineffective military of the monarchy makes sense, right? Because you give out an order or a command and half of your team just like, what, 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 what did you say? What was that? So that was already one of the issues that the empire had to face. The next thing that we have to look at is the economic background of the empire. So the monarchy's economy was an agricultural-based economy heavily relying on manpower. This means that when the workforce was pulled into the army to fight and they died or they got wounded so they were out of the workforce, there were no one to attend the fields, hence there was no food was grown. So the absence of millions of men crucial for agricultural labor disrupted the food production and it had a domino effect on the empire's economy. Food production plummeted, the transportation systems became overwhelmed, and these industrial production struggled to meet the escalating demand for munitions in the, for the war machine. Despite Germany's constant assistance, the economic strain proved unmanageable. The 
even though the military conquered productive agricultural regions in Romania in 1916, but they prioritized the food for the army, leaving the civilians in desperate conditions in the home front. The empire already had underlying issues with nationalist independence movements, and the famine caused by the war fueled these struggles even more. The inflation soared from an index of 129 in 1914 to staggering 1,589 in 1918, literally erasing the cash savings of the middle class. The war's economic toll amounted up to approximately 20% of the empire's GDP. Also, the loss of lives and injuries sustained by the soldiers amounted 10% of the entire workforce of the monarchy. And this proving catastrophic for an empire that relied heavily on agriculture and labor force. As conclusion, the economic strain of the home front emerged as a critical factor in the downfall of the Austrian Empire during World War I. Food shortages, inflation, and political instability played a crucial role in the last days of the empire.